Hey guys, we're live and welcome to our student to student to student skills. And we're gonna talk about in AP world and we're gonna talk about source analysis with you guys. So it sounds like a really complex term, but all it means is that all it means is that you're just we're just gonna break down sources. We're gonna read about we're gonna re read about documents, we're gonna analyze images, and we'll, we'll just discuss them. We're gonna talk about strategies along the way. And Dylan, hey, hey Dylan, hey Mr. Beckman, and I'm so I'm Jed. I'm Yvonne. And we're gonna be AP World streamers tonight. So hope hope you have fun with, with us, guys. Yes, this is the key skill in your DBQs and your even your short answer questions. So. Mm -hmm. So make sure to follow Private World on all their uh, social media accounts on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Think Fiveable. Also, by the way, um, we also have a poll on the on the um, poll bar, like on the bottom of your Crowdcast um, page. You know, we're basically just asking, like, which part of the school year you're on? Are you on? Uh, what time period are you guys on? So are you guys on like twelve fifty to fourteen fifty, like units one and two? Or are you on 1450, 1750, which is like units three and four? So um, also, if you want to answer Mr. Beckman and chat, like where's everyone tuning in for tonight? So we're from California, so <laughs> we hear your opinion, guys. All right. All right, so this is just one of many um, streams that we have every week, um, every week, every month in Fiebel. Um, so this is, um, so this is uh, basically, we're, we're here to develop your skills, right? So, um, we also have more streams. So tomorrow, no, two days from now, we're going to talk about technological innovations in the early modern world with Evan. And the same day, an earlier time, we're going to do doing the DBQ thesis with Patrick. So, so, so this stream is basically connected to that stream, by the way, because we're develop we're developing writing skills here. So, um, I'm going to keep that in mind. We also have changing social hierarchies with Donald in the early modern world. So, same time period, and we also have resisting empires in land and sea. So everyone wasn't really that buddy buddy. You know, there's always war. There's always conflict. So <laughs> Evan, will, Evan will prefer to explore that in thirty first, like Halloween, guys. Um, so also, you may notice now notice that our streams are based on content or skill development. So it's not it's a win win situation regardless of whatever whatever stream you go to. So so check them out, guys. All right. Ivana will talk about our series. So we're doing a student to student series where we have uh, pairs of AP World students who um, go over really important skills that you need for uh, AP World. And we're kicking it off with source analysis. Yep. Um, you can see um, there's textbook reading. There's some taking notes from lecture. There's studying for the AP test. So we have a huge variety of of skills that we're developing. It's not just one skill or the other. We're developing all of them and it's gonna it's it's over the span of a whole month. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as well. All right, so in this stream, so if you read the title, it's about source analysis. So first we're gonna introduce you to a strategy called hip analysis. Some of you may be familiar with it, some of you may be not. So we're all in different places. So what this is aiming to do is to just bring you at the same, like at least at the same pace, you know, where everyone gets the lesson because I mean, I've, I've been there in, in AP World. There were, there were times I've been left out and I'm just like crying myself inside, deep inside, like, what am I doing here? So I don't, wanna, I don't want you guys to like waste your time here and just staring at nothing. So um, I want you guys to learn about hypnosis. So it's a strategy that we'll talk about later. And of course, this is what you guys want. You want guys, you guys want some practice. So we have some examples, we have some sample sources, and we're gonna break them down with a strategy that is said, which is called HIP. So yes, documents in text, documents as images or pictures. So you probably have seen already in your test. And if you already did, um, we're just gonna do some recap here. So, and we're gonna have some Q and A at the end. We're gonna save some time for you guys to just ask us anything, like anything life, you know, any skills, content, you know, just your free time. So, all right. So to begin, analysis is the critical skill that you need for AP World. On the AP exam, you're tested so much via short answer questions, uh, DBQs, and beyond. And you even see um, 
visuals and other such sources in your stimulus-based multiple choice questions as well. So they're just everywhere, so you can't avoid them. You really need to know how to address them in the most efficient way. So HIP stands for historical context, intended audience, point of view, and purpose. Each of these parts play a really critical part in being able to effectively analyze a source, uh, whether it be an image or a document, you can use all of these um, parts of the acronym to apply to these sources. Um, even not just with your um, DBQs or short answers, but with your multiple choice as well, because uh, College Board is trying to stay away from memorization-based questions, which is why they're stimulus-based. So it's really important to be able to know how to analyze your sources so that you can um, appropriately answer a question. So yeah, um, once again, if you're doing your textbook, you're reading a textbook, like don't skip those visuals. You're not there just for aesthetic value to waste print or ink. They're there for you to under to like, you know, immerse yourself in history and to like practice breaking down these sources once again. So by the end of this, by the end of this stream, once again, we see this picture in the right, like you you'll you'll get to um you know, but you get to like um break it down to like yo, what's what's happening in that picture? Like wh whose perspective is that, you know? So um, first, so once again, we're going to go over what HIP is. So it's an acronym. So like we said here earlier, it's an acronym which stands for like each um, each letter is uh, stands for something. So H stands for historical context. So if you know what context says, it's, it's what's happening during the during the um, during the the document. Um, like who created the source? Because who would write that? What was going on? What was going on around that time period for the guide, the author, to create the source? When was it created? Was it during World War One? Was it created during, um, you know, expansion of the Ottoman Empire? So was it during the Mongol Empire's expansion, or was it during the fall of Rome? You know, there's a huge variety of events that can, that this can happen. So we want to narrow it down to the context, and so um, throughout here, we're just going to go over like what you had to look for. So here you're gonna look for specific names. So it you tend to be like um when you like start a school year, you kind of tend to like think of it as a memorization game. Eventually you realize it's not really a memorization game, but you're gonna familiar yourself, you you're probably familiar with names. So if I tell you Genghis Khan, you're like, oh, it's a Mongol dude. If I tell you Marco Polo, oh, he's the European traveler dude from Italy, if you want to be that specific. So you wanna look for them. They help you narrow down the the, the, the um the content. You want to look for dates. So there's a huge difference in 1914, which is World War One era. 1453 was during the um, post-classical era. So there's a difference. What had guns? What had, you know, advanced spears and um, um, mus not even muskets, like even way before that, primitive equipment. You want to look for cities, locations, regions. You want to know where is this happening? Because it's better to understand what's happening if you just think of Asia compared to like the whole world. Unless you're a, you're an, a PhD historian, which is um, um so um yeah, but the point is you want to know uh, you want to help narrow it down. You want to you want to help yourself basically. You wanna you wanna um make things easier. Do not not complicated. We're not just throwing this at you just because we want to. It's because we want to help you guys. So look at an example here. You see the picture. Um, something you would you typically say if you're contextualizing, you can use geographical or um like an event. Like oh hmm, this looks like um. The Colombian exchange was during um, between natives and Europeans in, in, in the Americas. So it gives like your geography, like, or if you remember specific events, like, hmm, I think that's it. So you already know what's happening. That's context. Or you can say, like, hmm, I mean, they had boats during this 1450. Um, uh, Europeans and natives kind of interacted during that time period, like 1450 and 1750. So that's also narrowing down. So, and everything helps, you know, every detail matters. So that's one thing we want to, um, we want to impart to you guys as we go. Oops. So the, so second, the, second, uh, uh, the HIP acronym is the intended audience. It's pretty clear or self-explanatory. The intended audience part is just trying to figure out who the document or image was directed towards. And we kind of want to figure out, is it um, directed towards a group of people? Is it a single person? These are some key things to try to figure out. We have this example of a course, and it, it's really imperative to look at who it's addressed to. We can see it's um, it given by the Muslim merchants of Calcutta. 
to the Hindu ruler of Calicut. So this is clearly addressed to him. So off the bat, we can because we can identify who the intended audience is, this is a great thing to analyze in our DBQ or um, other question because it's just so clear cut. And for the DBQ, you are only required to pick one of the four skills test for the HIP acronym. So this will be a very clear cut one. And even uh, further developed when it goes down to say your majesty, once again, reinforcing a ruler. So always try to look for the easier ones just because you do have a limited time on the DBQ. Uh, I'm sure Jed can feel the time crunch during the AP exam. Yeah. So it's imperative to try to find your easier points and this would be a great one because it's almost guaranteed a, his, uh, a hit point for that section. Yeah, I was just like a reminder, if you guys have any questions, just drop them like anytime, you know, we're always here to answer your questions. So, all right, purpose. So we're, we already had H, it's our concept, we already had I, intended audience, now we're going to the P, purpose. So it's literally what it says. The purpose, like what's the meaning? You know, everything, what's the purpose of life? What's the meaning behind it? So what's the goal of the document? Why was it written? Like, it's, it's the why. So context was the what, intended audience was probably the who, the purpose is the why of the document. Why Why is this guy writing a letter? Why is this guy writing a, why did our founding fathers write the constitution? Something like that. So that's uh, one, of the, one of the, it's not really tough, but it's it's definitely harder to like figure out like exactly compared to like the first two for, per, for me personally. So examples we have like, let's say, let's say you're a Christian envoy and you want to write a letter to the Muslim Sultan. Um, why would you write a letter to Sultan in the first place? Would, are you gonna go, are you just gonna ask him to be friends or something? No, um, maybe, maybe it's probably, maybe it's for us to negotiate a trade deal. Like, oh, I mean, we're in the same, we're in the same region. So it would be beneficial for us to, um, you know, trade and strike a deal instead of fighting each other. Or you wanna promote Christianity. Maybe the Muslim Sultan is just a newly converted dude. And um, maybe, um, it's it's a it's the best time to convert the sultan because typically in history um, when you convert a leader, all the all the other followers, all the other subjects of the empire will follow too. So if you look at historical examples, but anyways, maybe you just want to promote Christianity, or you, maybe you just want to create a political alliance that goes back to a trade deal. But this time it's just purely politics. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like would you rather fight us or would you rather you know um, ally with us? Something like that. It's like the dynamics of history. So. For example, here, not going to be the entire thing, but basically Harry Verrilts, he's the governor of Bengal for, you know, basically in, in India, it's a British East India company. He's writing a letter to the company's board directors. And basically what's going on here is that um, they, ba um, they basically um, gained, recently gained control over India. And, and as, the, as the highlighted text says here, since we have become governors here, however, the new policies we have made, because the old policies were... Um, for them, um, not optimal. They were not the best, like cost benefit wise. So, since we have become new governors here, however, the new policies we have made are designed to restore the quality of commerce and the spirit of monopoly promoted by the natives shall be destroyed. So, their goal, as like this, you can tell the diction shall be destroyed. It's really strong. So, maybe his goal was to assert assert authority over new new newly gained authority over those colony of merchants who were there before now that the british are there you know you want to you want to keep those in mind when you when you're analyzing documents if you if you're better at looking at the why instead of like the what or the who you know the last part of the acronym is the point of view this part is um another key aspect of the acronym because oftentimes it's given when it'll say by someone or uh, in this caption with the troops of Timor attacking the city of Kiva, it's the Timor that, um, the troops of Timor that are the, that's point of view it's from. Um, and these uh, troops were a Mongol Turkic group. So as you can see in the image, they're clearly having a lot of success attacking the city. You have people at the top of the building, at the bottom, they're covering all the bases. And this clearly shows that they're winning. They're having, they're super successful. But at the same time, it's super important to note, like um, mentioned over here with the historical bias, that because um, it's the perspective of the troops of Timor, it could be potentially a little biased and just skewed towards the perspective of the winner. 
it may be a little bit of an exaggerated uh, representation of what actually went down. So it's really good to note that. And when you identify the point of view in your essay, make sure you don't just say, oh, it's the troops of Timor, it's their, from their point of view. You want to explain what this leads to. This leads to this bias because um, if it's their paint, they created this painting, they're depicting them in the best way possible. You don't want to just identify, you have to explain it. Otherwise you're not going to get the point because College Board wants to see that you can analyze the point of view, not just identify because that's very straightforward and that's pretty easy to do. And that doesn't test your analysis skills. Yeah, basically the point is whenever you, it's not just, you don't stop at just, oh, look, um, it's it's the Timurids point of view or like early in context, like, oh, that's the Columbian exchange. Like you, you, you want to know, you want to point it out and explain how that affects like the argument, like, because, because it's, it's an essay or a DBQ is an essay, like it's, there's a prompt. So you want to show how that point of view, how the context, how the audience, how the purpose connects to that overall argument you have. So I want to keep that in mind. So also like keywords, gender, occupation, class, especially class. Like usually it's the nobles that look down peasants, you know, gender used, used to be patriarchal society, really patriarchal society back then. Occupation, it's another thing. Usually if you're you're a soldier, you would look that you would be more um um yeah, but you would have a different worldview than artisan and religion, different um beliefs, and just conflicting sides in general. All right, so, ooh, Massachusetts. Nice. King, um, Ching, I don't know, King Long, Ching Long, I pronounce it, I hope they did a nice job. Let's see you here. Um, all right, so that's basically an overview of HIP, but this is somewhere, this is like a recap in a nutshell. You don't have, to, once again, you don't have to do all four. You'll need to do like one or two. Once again, you have, you're short in time and technically you can, you can, you don't have to use, technically they're also applicable outside DBQs. But um, the the best the you, you'll see these the most in DBQ, so that's why we're saying it. But yeah, I'm gonna analyze seven documents. So if you do the math, seven times four is like twenty eight. You don't have time to do twenty eight <laughs> sentences in in about an hour, in, a, in about an hour and a half. So you would just want to pick your like you know your top two, top one factors, and you just go. So historical context once again, what's happening? So if we're talking about the Mongols, you could just say it's during the 1200 to 1450, like unit one, unit two area, period. Or if you're talking about audience, so um, yeah, commitment, good job. So intended audience, so basically who did, whom the direct, the, the document was directed. So, so maybe, so if, there's a, if it says explicitly the Catholic priest wrote a letter to the Buddhist monk, then who, who's the audience? It's the Buddhist monk directly. Purpose is why it was written. Maybe you want to convince someone, you want to argue with someone, you want to assert dominance in someone, something like that. It's it's subjective. It's, own, it's your own analysis because it's there's usually, you know, we're just interpreting history. That's, that's the cool thing. There's no, I mean, technically there's no right or wrong answer, but college board is like, it's not like you're wrong, you know? They're more, they're kind of lenient sometimes. So yeah, point of view, last but not least, it's the author's influence of the document. That's a, that's a really technical, but basically it's a perspective, like how it shapes the document. So you, going back to the Timurid example, where they, where, where um, these um, Timurid um, soldiers are invade, invading this one um, castle. If you're, you're looking at the, the eyes of the Timur warriors, they would be like, yeah, we're winning. Yeah, um, we killed everyone. And um, if you look at the, the eyes of the, the soldiers, they're like, no one, I mean, they don't, they're too salty, basically, they're too salty to admit defeat. They're like, no one died, you know? We're not losers. We just happen to be, we just happen to be like defenseless during that time. So you want to keep that in mind too. So that's hip in a nutshell, once again. So um, if I'm going too fast or you have any questions, once again, don't hesitate to ask in the comments or in the as a question bar. So what are the most uh, parts of the um, DBQ sources that you're given or SAQ depending on which part of the exam you're on is the description. The description a lot of the time will tell you certain parts of the HIP acronym like the um, intended audience or the historical context. Like if we um, analyze this one, we can see that what's happening right now is a sultan's arrival at a mosque. So that's historical context is telling us what's going to go on in the source that will follow. And it's just super imperative to really look at these. It's just 
it's such a big mistake to ignore these. I can't stress it enough. A lot of the times, like even on the 2019 AP World EBQ, we got a picture of a box and it was pretty unclear as to what's going on because it was just a picture of a box with a um, pattern on it. But the um, description kind of helped uh, break it down a little more for us. So we were able to like further analyze it. And again, cannot stress that it's so important to read the source description because it'll give you a lot of helpful clues that you prop you may not be able to figure out just from the source image alone. Yeah, so um, if, if you're lucky, you can get like half or like three out of four the hip components just by the source and the in the in the like the annotation in front of the, the description. So if you're lucky and um, most of the time you you are lucky. So um, you you don't want to just be a hot shot and just go like you know what I'll just really read the document because. You only have a 15 minute reading period, but some people tend to like rush it. Um, that's everything about developing and timing throughout the years. So um, you want to keep that in mind, but don't, um, I, I assure you, it's not gonna be a regret to just spend a little time just reading the annotations like source, Hag of Missouri and the Marine and Baker, blah, blah, blah. That's worth it. That's worth the time we're spending. So yeah, going back here, we get to break it down. So. Um, yes, yeah, so like step one, just look at a summary, basically just look at it and you, you can break it down. Once again, you can break it down to the jigsaw puzzle of the hip and you can just annotate away. Um, you have your own, you get your own copy of the test. So you can just use, use a your pen, you can use your pencil, just underline away, annotate. Annotate, annotate. Like you see, you see, like oh, it's a, he said predator. Arbin and Baker. It must be, must be important. Oh, it's uh, the fast of Ramadan. That's an Islamic holiday. Maybe that's important. It's context. So just annotate away and then just like write like on the side, like focus on the most obvious details that pop out. Just, just like write like oh, there's probably um context, you know. Um, but if you're short in time, once again, you know had to do all four you can only do you can you can do one or even two if you if you want but um you should stick with two but one is also it's okay to do one um so yeah don't waste time nitpicking every small detail it's not gonna be worth it if you're reading seven documents you're like you're like you're stuck at like the third one you're still like hmm you sound like magnifying glass it's not gonna work out so okay so Anyway, so that's how, um, so basically we just showed you the steps on how to analyze text and images. So now we're gonna go over some examples with you guys. These are examples. So uh, maybe you can, you can you can do it, but you can also do it like on your own if you have like a spare paper or you can just mentally annotate it while you're doing it. So, but I'll read the, I'll read the um, text. So, so basically the one in bold is the, um, the, the summary. So after traveling through much of the Islamic world and returning home to Morocco, Ibn Battuta took a last journey across the Sahara into West Africa. So um, let's see if I'm, okay, yeah. Oh, we can just break it here. So basically example one. So if you if you look at it closely, you can see that, well, ask yourself what's happening. So you can say, um, hmm, oh, Ibn Battuta took a last journey across the Sahara to West Africa. So boom, you got your context. Isn't that good? And he's traveling. So you already got the location, you can narrate it down. So it's not, it's on Asia, it's, in, it's Africa, it's Africa. So that's already good. If you know your history in Africa, you're already you're already at the advantage. So, so yeah, um, yeah, he traveled much in the Islamic world. That's as a traveler, he must be documenting what he saw throughout the um, throughout his journey. So that's why this is why the the document exists. Maybe it's his diary, you know. So you can you can count as historical context. Maybe it's even purpose. Why is he writing it to like show off his journeys, basically what he saw. So. Ibn Battuta, so um, I just didn't know. So it says, yeah, once again, I talked about that. Ibn Battuta is journeying across the Sahara. That's context. He's traveling across Africa. You don't have to, you don't have to like find like three sentences of evidence for historical context. If you just see like a small phrase and you're confident with it, just go with it. So for me, that was, it was that phrase. And if you don't even, if you don't know who Ibn Battuta is, I mean, if you look at names, like, um, it's like a culture thing, maybe. I mean, he look, it looks like a Muslimish name, you know. It's not like um, it's not like a, a American tribe, like oh the 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 Aztecs. Not really. It's more, it's not like the Europeans, really, like English like names, so, you know. So you can also point it out. So maybe it's a point of view, you know. It maybe, it, but at this point, the, all of these probably some of them probably be maybe. Some of them maybe like actual um, POV sort of context. So you want to not stop at the summary. You want to go read the whole thing, unfortunately. <laughs> so if you're reading, but 
It's actually interesting. So I'll read. On Fridays, if a man does not go early to the mosque, he cannot find a corner to pray in on account of the crowd. It is a custom of theirs to send each man his boy to the mosque with his prayer mat. The boy spreads out for his master in the, in the place of fitting him and remains on it until he comes to the mosque. So basically there's, he's talking about a boy, like um, it's like a cult, it's like a daily um, thing. Um, so when, it, when he can't um, find a place to pray in, basically he has, he has a boy, he's, he's gonna spread out like a mat and then um, he's, he's gonna wait for his master to pray. So the prayer mats are made of the leaves of a tree resembling a date palm, but without fruit. None of their good qualities is their habit of clean white garments on Fridays. Even if a man has nothing but an old worn shirt, he washes it and cleans it and wears it in Friday service. So basically it's talking about, you know, what the prayer mats are, but Ivan Bakuda, remember he's a narrator. He's talking about how they're clean, they're they're pure, like their their dressing is their their um their clothing is pure. Like even if it's like worn out, this guy is just went ham. He's just washing it and cleans it and He's, you can tell he's respectful to his religion. So go to the annotation. So starting with um, the first one, it is the custom of theirs to send his man, his boy, blah, 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 blah. So so they're talking about religious costumes here where, where even the kids are well behaved. Like they don't just run around play. They're, they're actually waiting for the, where their master to, to come to the prayer place. So you can say that, that that talks about customs. Maybe it's not, maybe, maybe it's not really, um, historical context or any of the hippo you're looking for but um technically like reading reading documents is also like a reading comprehension thingy like you want to know what you're what you're reading like not just like oh this gets lost in like a technical language there so and then um, i also highlight another the good quality so i highlighted good because remember they're talking about narrator here i've been batuta he's praising the locals so if he's praising the locals so would you, if you're like a stranger in a, in a in a in a different a foreign place, like would you tend more to praise like someone who's like you can relate with, or someone you you're like completely like stranger with? It's of course it would be the one who you're like familiar with. Like it's like the same vibe. So in this case, um, if you, we all know that I'm between this like a Muslim, so it must be these locals may also be Muslims. If you haven't. There's also some keywords like the mosque, the prayer mat, the the Friday, the Friday garment, um, white garment like tradition. The, all of those are Friday service. All of those are are um, all of the all of these are Muslim tra Islam traditions. So um, you must also be a Muslim. So let's keep reading. So this is like part two. Yet another is their zeal for learning the Quran by heart. Quran is the holy book. They put their children in chains if they show any backwardness in memorizing it, and they are not set free until they have it by heart. I visited the Qadi, like um, religious, I don't think it's a leaderish, but um, one of those. Um, so his children were chained up. So I said to him, will you not let them free here, uh, loose? He replied, I shall not do so until they learn the Quran by heart. So what's interesting, it went like, it went like, a, it went darker. <laughs> so, um, okay, uh, Qadi is a judge Islam. Thank you, Mr. Beckman. So yeah, it's one of those, it's really specific terms I don't really know. So, um, so yeah, it went darker here. So let's let's go over that. So once again, he's complimenting the learning of Quran. Like, um, it may be sad to know that he's kind of like, um, um, yeah. Well, while the men's treatment of like the children is horrible, and like if you if you think about it, in today's society, it's hor horrible. Like, I'm but to remain impressed in their devotion to Quran. So so you can now you can now distinguish like a POV like. Ivan Batuta likes devout Muslims, so um, for sure. Like, like he's just um, he's not he's not like oh no you you better free that kid. No, he's just like hmm, interesting, something like that. So, um, so yeah, um, that that's also evidenced by I shall not do so until they learn the Quran by heart. So that's where you get the POV. So now that we got like most, we got like the hippo, like we got like the the um sub parts details like in summary and in the actual documents. So let's go over it. Start context, once again, it's his journey in West Africa. He went to Morocco. He was in the Islamic world and now he's in Africa. Who's the audience? This is a tricky one. If it's, it's not always that obvious. Sometimes he's like, oh, a letter to, um, you know, Mr. Garfield. You know, it's obvious because, you know, it's Mr. Garfield, but here, um, usually I go with like, the, I would, I usually go with the mindset like mm, it's probably his the readers of his journals and you just try to think which demographic is he aiming for so maybe it's his higher ups once he gets back he 
everyone wants to know what he did, what um, what he saw. So maybe it's them. They're really interested. So maybe it's them. So once again, you have to do all of them. But um, if that's your top pick, then so be it. P, purpose. So he wants, um, once again, this is subjective. You, you, while you're doing this with me, you may have a different um, pur um, purpose statement. For me, I thought that he was just showcasing the lifestyle and devotion of Moroccans toward Islam. It, it's like, um, like in today's society, it's like a vlog, a, a blogger of a vlog you know like these these people going around the world and seeing how the world how the world works it's it's probably different in their own country different from from other um continents but basically he's sh showing it to the readers and lastly we we always already saw it and um, the pov is a muslim he's a muslim so um remember um in the slide we're talking about like um ethnicity or um religion so it's the religion part so um you know maybe it's a bias towards muslims compared to christians and he and you want to look at the tone too like is he being angry no he's being like he's praising them it's like a favorable tone favorable tone so that's one example so um don't worry we have more so um you know but we're, i'm hoping you're getting familiarizing yourself with the process so Ivana will do a sample too all right all right so example two um, is a Portuguese report from East Africa in the early 1500s. And this is the source description that is given. And we will go over the actual um, document in a second. I'm just going to read the source description. Um, this source is titled, Copy of a letter of the King of Portugal sent to the King of Castile, part of Spain, concerning the voyage and success in India when it appeared in Rome in 1505, although the title is not necessarily accurate. The passage below describes 13 ships under the command of Pedro Alvarez Cabral during the second ever Portuguese voyage to India in 1500. And then the source is Medieval Iberia, readings from Christian, Muslim, and Jewish sources. And yep. Oh yeah, actually, um, before we even, um, by the way, some, maybe some uh, along the way, maybe some of you guys may be like, confused. Like, I don't know what is happening. Like, I haven't, I'm still unit zero, or unit one, or unit two, or unit three, or unit four. Like I don't know what's what this is. Basically, remember our stream is basically developing like analyzing sources. So um, we're just jumping around units. We're not really specifically unit three or four or unit one or two. We're just like a more general stream. So um, yeah, okay, going back. So in this description, it, there are so many points that are hit um just from the description alone without even looking at the document like we can see right here that this was um the sent to the king of castile and sent to it's pretty straightforward it just directly uh like um sends us to the fact that it's stating this is a letter to the king of castile the king of castile is the intended audience and then just straight away copy of a letter to the king of Port uh sorry sent to the king of castile by the king of portugal sent to the king of castile um is what it's supposed to say and yeah again that's very direct these are the kinds of points you want to go to when you're doing your dbq just because of the fact that they're so clear cut and a lot easier to identify than maybe the purpose at times because the purpose might be hard if you're not understanding the block of information that you're given over here we see that it's the second ever portuguese voyage to india in 1500 so uh, you can definitely context, his, use the historical contextualization um, strategy if you remember a little bit about history slightly prior to that with the Treaty of Tordesillas of 1494. Um, if you guys have covered that in your classes, you may know that what ha this treaty essentially was established by the Pope where the Pope pretty much told Spain and Portugal which parts of the world they're like the new world they're allowed to explore and potentially even conquer this is directly because of this treaty that's where uh kind of initiated portugal to start going into their um designated area of exploration so to speak so because of the fact that these are such closely related events this uh treaty can really contextualize what's going on and what kind of led to the portuguese voyage so it's pretty important to note if you remember that it's just great to make that connection definitely And this is the map. We just wanted a visual for you guys just to kind of see uh, where, how the Portuguese world was expanding. You see it's expanding into a little bit of Asia and then the coasts of Africa. And this is all 
as a result of the Treaty of Tordesillas because of the fact that they were given this place to be able to explore. And then the Spanish went on. You can see the Spanish are closer to the um, Americas because that was a space that they were given based on the uh, line that divided the two regions. Yeah. So uh, this is pretty much the uh, narrative that was based off of the source description. And as you can see, definitely there are certain parts that I'm going to read it aloud. That may be a little bit confusing as we go, but we're going to clarify everything in a minute. Um, sailing by the coast, they passed Sofala, Indian Ocean City in Southern Africa, present day Mozambique. This is an island at the mouth of the river and is inhabited by many merchants. Their gold is abundant and is brought to them from the interior of Africa by men small in body, strong and very ugly and with small voices. This is the same manner which gold is brought to our mine in Guinea in West Africa. This island, too, belongs to the king of Kilwa, north of Sofala, present-day Tanzania. Past the island, they found two big ships coming from Sofala and going to the king. These two ships were held by our captain, but once he understood that they belonged to the aforesaid king, he uh, let them go free. As you can see, I'm going to continue in a minute, but some of this is getting a little bit confusing for me. I feel like I don't know about you, Jed, but I do feel like it's a lot of text going all at once. So I feel like when you do have these blocks of text that are a little bit confusing, it's super important to highlight just main ideas, especially when the source description was as descriptive as it was, it can save you a lot of time and you'll still be able to get the points in the long run. For example, I think some key ideas over here is that the letters were written in Arabic and the mention of trade. These are some really important concepts to mention, but I don't feel like it's um, crucial in every single case to make sure to thoroughly understand everything because if it is a little bit confusing and you're running low on time, you do want to kind of take that into consideration uh, paired with what you learned from the source description. So at the end of the text, we see that the letters were written in Arabic and they grant, uh, and they were sent to the king to grant him traffic and trade off the island. This shows the purpose and it ties directly to the um, source description, which talked about the uh, letter sent to the king, because it shows that now uh, pairing the two together, the source description and then example two of uh, the actual text, we're seeing that the mention of trade and traffic in the island, this was probably part of the letter that was sent to the king. So that shows the purpose. The purpose was from the um, king to send, uh, or the king of Castile to be able to understand the trade that was occurring um, and the traffic on that island. That was the purpose of the uh, entire document. So you're able to identify the purpose with part of the example, but uh, the text, but also tying it back together with the source description, which is why it's so important to look at both. For sure. So for the hip analysis, the overall hip analysis, we can see that this was a Portuguese voyage to India 16th century for the historical contextualization. And we can also talk about the Treaty of Tordesillas as we mentioned earlier. And a lot of this came from the source description as opposed to the actual um, document, which shows again, once again, the importance of looking at the source description. And then we have the intended audience, the King of Castile slash Portugal. Um, again, this was shown a lot in the source description. So again, super, super important. And over here, the purpose where it says to report the success of Cabral's mission in terms of gold and geographical information acquired on India and even Africa. This directly ties the source description and the actual source together because in the source we talked about gold and the, um, the large amount of gold available in the region. And then um, in the source description, we talked about once again, like the success of it. And we mentioned India, we mentioned Africa. So it's super imperative to get once again, tie these two together. I can't stress that enough. And in the source description is where we found out who the um, POV was POV was of, which was Pedro Alvarez Cabral. And that, again, this was shown only in the source description. We didn't get a name in the actual source. So this shows you that you can, again, get so much value from the source description when you're answering your prompts. All right, so now we're done with the document examples. Like, ooh, no more text to read. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys. So, but analyzing documents don't stop at reading. 
You also look at when you're looking at pictures, you look at the images, you want to analyze pictures, you want to break them down. And for some, it's easier because um, it's just, you know, pictures where a thousand words, you just look at it like, oh, th there's a lot of things happening. For some of you guys, it might be tougher because there's no text, there's no explicit hints that, oh, it's Pedro Alves Cabral. No, you just see some dude in the hat uh, in European clothes. So we'll go over that. So, like in text, it's, it's the same two step generally general structure annotate the summary first because like like ivana mentioned last year ap world dbq there was document number seven was a box like of all things it was just a box with like an, like, like elephant elephant print like um yeah so and you don't know what's happening you don't know um you don't know what it, it's going on but there's a summary there once again it helped me it helped it, it may not I may not be accurate with my entire argument, but it, it gave me a clue. It's better than nothing. Yes, that box was infamous in the world history AP for a long time. So if you're gonna look it up, <laughs> for sure, look it up. You, you're, you're gonna understand, man. Yeah. So once again, annotate the picture. I don't know. So the first step is <laughs> so pick, um at first you annotate the summary and then you annotate the picture. So you're gonna be like, how do you annotate the picture? I don't see words. So look for the following. You know, there's like clues around. Look for the caption in the background. Maybe you see like some text, is it floating text in the clouds or like, if you see like it's a certain language, maybe it's Hindi, it's Hindu or it's Chinese or it's um, English. And you, you can already narrow down the POV. Like whoever wrote that must be, um, whoever knows, understands the language must be the writer and maybe you can also find intended audience because uh, maybe he's writing to the same person because why would I draw the picture of like the Chinese characters if I'm aiming for like Americans, you know, something like that. So info about author audience, once again, that's how you find out. Appearances in contrast, like it's, this is this usually for like, um, like when two groups or people are portrayed. So like it's one group portray portrayed differently than another. This is where you find historical bias, POV. So I showed you earlier in like the first few slides, there was the Columbian exchange where you see like there's a European, there's a, on the right, there's like European people and there on the left there's like the natives. And um, you can see that the natives were like portrayed as like more scantily clad, more savage. Um, um, per, uh, appearances so that's where you can get the pov and the bias unfortunately so and then you can always look at, you can always like look at your annotations like real quick to figure out documents purpose like hmm or can just think for a couple of seconds like hmm why 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 would why would he do this why would he like there's actually better if it's a political cartoon so like um you know once again like let's say they're portraying um the native americans just like savage and you can say like um, whoever wrote, whoever drew the, drew the, the picture, the visual, maybe maybe trying to like give give like civilians like a um, like a bad impression of the natives, like a, a negative impression, so something like that. You want to keep it in mind and don't go overboard. This goes same thing goes same thing with documents. Only follow what the question wants, especially in SAQs. So um, that's for the that's more on the like the, we're gonna go over it later with a sample like mini SAQs. So you'll see it later. So we have an example here. It's basically, it's an illustration from, I'm, I'm reading a summary. It's an illustration from manuscript of 1282 de depicting a Christian playing chess with a Muslim, of course. Used as a front cover image of basically um, Jabba Rodriguez's book, Muslim and Christian Contact. So um, um, before once again, step one, before you even start annotating the, the, the picture, annotate the text. So you see how I highlighted stuff there. We'll, um, we'll, we'll break them down one by one. 1282, that's the year. Remember, when you're looking for context, look for the years, the time frame. Is it modern day or like the olden days? So 13th century, maybe you know what's going on, maybe you're not. But like in my mind, if I if I like read my book every night, something like that, and that type of story. So I would say like, oh, 13th century. That's uh, that's the time where like religions and empires are like still expanding. They're not peak expansion yet, like expansion level, they're still expanding. So you may wonder, maybe the last part you wouldn't really um, think about it, but, but if it's better if you do. Like, where would Christians and Muslims interact? Maybe, well, other than trade, it's more in battles. So, what are battles that were occurring during that time? Maybe wars? Yeah, you, like you want to narrow it down, but like for me, what well, popped out the first because of like how it's famous even today is the Crusades. So, like, that's, that's already historic context. So, maybe it's during the Crusades, maybe it's not, but you already know, but you have an idea, a general picture of what's going on. All right, a Christian and a Muslim. As I said, once, once again, like, why would they be in the same place? So maybe they are in the trading center. Maybe they're 
And if they, even if they are or they're not, they're exchanging religious ideas because humans are naturally curious creatures. Like they want to know the culture of another, another like foreign, um, another foreign entity. So maybe that's POV. They can narrow it down. It's either a Christian POV or a Muslim POV or both. We'll see about that later. Or and you can even like talk about purpose. Like maybe they're exchanging ideas. Like what's the point? Why are they playing chess? Maybe one dude is teaching the other how to play. You can argue that. Uh, but you want, once again, you want to read, you want to, want, to, want to look at the document first before you just jump jump ahead. So, chess, like, hmm, may, like I said, maybe one is teaching the other how to play. And that's a term, like, that's an example of like a term that we call cultural diffusion. So maybe you're like, hmm, diffusion? That sounds like a science term. Um, so diffusion is basically, it's the spread off. So like, if I say like political, no, no. Like, yeah, religious diffusion is basically saying the spread of religion from let's say America to Asia, like one region to another. So that's a clear purpose. That's a clue. Maybe, maybe it's just trying to once again, spread ideas. And like, you see how like, you see how like they give the title here, Muslim, Muslim and Christian contact in the middle ages, a reader. Mm, it gives a lot, you know, like, oh, they're making contact and it's in the middle ages. Now I know if that didn't before. So we're keeping in mind now. Um, I annotated it already, but um, if you like, you'll eventually find out these observations. Like, it, obviously, you don't want to look at like, oh, it's the, the background's brown. No, you, you want to focus on like um, um, the details. So, like the the symbols, the the flag. It looks very Islamic to me. So maybe maybe the the Muslim guy owns a tent. So that's already a clue. They seem to be a friendly game of chess. Nothing 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 bad's going on or anything. Doesn't really tell me anything, but at least um. You can you can like use that like while you really while you're explaining your evidence like oh in document number two there are um, a Christian man and a Muslim man are playing chess something like that he, he, like how to summarize things and and he seems to be in thought like they, this the on the right the Muslim he's trying to try to teach something this other guy was like hmm that's interesting so so it appears that the Christian appears to be learning something here and um, let's see yeah. So we, we already got, by the time we got, already got enough details. So let's do the hippo. H, what was going on again? Look at the, remember, we looked at the paragraph. So it's the, the summary. We you know it's the 13th century. It's a Christian and Muslim guy playing chess. That's a good movie and plot. So um, tended audience, um, maybe, and once again, I put an asterisk because it's obscure, but I, once again, I usually go with like whoever's reading it modern day. So maybe, or like, during that time. So maybe it's either scholars during the time period or modern day historians. Like if, if you're not really confident with that, then don't use it. Maybe don't like steer away from it when you're doing your arguments. Purpose. So it took me a while to think of this, but you can argue that to depict how technology, to show how technology spread between people, different religions. So, so um, even if you don't know history, you can say that you can, you can either say that the Muslim was spreading chess, the Christian Christian um, male, or you can say that um, the Christian uh, the Christian guy was spreading the the the, the, the game of chess to the uh, Muslim dude. So um, yes, something dude, but like, okay, per, uh, POV. So you can also um, I mean I put an asterisk because it's kind of obscure too because it, you can't really argue anything with chess, you can argue cultural diffusion, but you can argue like, you cannot argue like um, the POV, but um, hey, hey, Sir Tat, um, I don't know your name, so sorry. So um, Christian or Muslim traveler POV. So that's um, that's one way of looking at it. Okay, so if, I think if I'm going too fast, once again, just tell me slow down, Jed, or just, you know, just, just go. Um, but hopefully you're, get, you're getting, you're getting in the flow of, doing hippo analysis, hip analysis. So I hope we're helping. All right, next example. It's another document, but it's more colorful. There's a lot more going on. So yep. you can see that the description is shorter right now, but like it's a group of Christian boys lined up to be registered by a Dev Sherman recruiter in 1588. So um, once again, we want to nitpick the, um, we want to nitpick the, what do you call this, the summary first. So let's go there. So I highlighted, like do it word per word, like a group of they're starting there. Christian. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we want to point it out. It's a Christian boy. So why what are what are Christian boys doing there? And like on the dead dev Sherm recruiter, like that's specific usually specific terms and dates. We want to highlight them. So underline and date. So 
you look at the date, okay, 1588. So if, if you're not at, at that time period yet, maybe you're not familiar with this, but once um once um, um you, you'll you'll re you'll you'll get to know it soon if you haven't been there yet, you're not there yet. So 1588, this is what's the time where the gunpowder empires, the Ottomans, the Safavids, the Mughals, rose in the Middle East, India, and like pretty much Central Asia-ish, if you, if you can argue. Especially the Ottomans at their peak in the Middle East. China was isolated. Um, if you remember, um, they stopped eventually stopped trading because um, they were more like they received the Pope Bobek and they were um, they didn't want they basically didn't want foreign people foreign trade. I mean they're they're pretty self sufficient. And the Americas are are um, I was like the reason why I put the Americas are way, uh, but the, you, you may recall Americas already like exploited but um, invaded by the, the Europeans, the Spanish, the British. So. But if you recognize the term, it's that's an extra credit bonus, hopefully. So like a the dev sure like I don't know what that is. Um, but if you do, that's basically um the Ottoman system where they kidnap basically whenever they invade like Christian lands, because I mean Muslim Muslim um, land invades Christian lands, like they basically kidnap these Christian boys and um they convert them to Islam and then like they make they transform them into like warriors and like their own like some of them are personal like um you know, they have like bureaucratic jobs or like in the government or just just warriors they're basically fighting for the government so you can say if you know that then you already have historical context if you don't know what the dev sherman is you already at least you know the time period so you have to worry about the the spread of islam or the rise of islam because you already know that it was already a near peak um level during that time so going back to christian boys now that we know that the dev sherman hopefully if you do or not that um there's they're, they're muslim basically so but and, and then they also mentioned christian boys like what is going on maybe it's like the chess thing again where they're interacting so um the author must be an onlooker he, he was probably there during that time so for him to depict that so oh okay so denshir may is basically the system uh it's, it's it's like a system where um once again it's a system where like whenever the ottomans like um, invade like uh, conquer lands they usually like you know they, they do like the typical things like they pillage um, pillage villages but the special thing is that they kidnap young boys like usually they're christian not all the time but usually they, they are and then they convert them to islam and then they like they kind of like indoctrinate them to like the islamic belief and then they make either they, if, if they're good enough to become warriors if they're not or they're they're kind of good enough they usually work at government jobs but basically um yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like we're at a different paces, so some some of the sources are really confusing. Some are made to be not. So don't worry, you'll you'll get you get you'll get there. So going back, Christian bull. Um, so there there's Christian, there's there's a Muslim. So the author must be either Christian or Muslim, who either is with or against the practice. So maybe he is pro. Them sure may. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. Something family gives a boys of willing because of opportunity advancement. So basically, they just. They're so desperate to rise up in like society. It's sad that you know um, that they give up your kids. So yes, social stratification. So that's true. So going back, um, it's either Christian or Muslim um, POV. So maybe until you see the pictures. So going back to the color pictures. So we see here. Um, I know the three observations. You can talk about the houses if you know about architecture, but I'm not. I'm not um I'm not an architecture guy, so I just stuck with like what what stood out to my eyes when I saw the picture. Also, yeah, Mr. Beckman, some of these boys become part of the elite, so it causes a strata, yeah. So what I found is that everyone's here, they're looking, they're they're observing, so they have call for attire. So this must be a very formal event. Because um usually it's because everyone cares, basically. So they know they want to know what's going on. So you can say it's a POV technically. Um um, between like um, maybe like you can see like it's, it's you see like the culture here like the Islamic uh, like the community here like gathering around and once again if you know what Dev Shirme is it's usually like the boys are being converted to Islam so it basically they're it's Muslim territory so that's one and then um, just like a mini observation you're like this guy here has a tallest hat he must be an influential religious leader or something like usually um actually it's actually it's actually like sometimes true like. And the people with the fanciest hats, they're like, uh, they're like, um, they usually have like high ranks because you know they get they have the they have the luxury to buy those stuff. But 
that's just a small observation to have. Like compared to these people that wear like hoods and this like small hats, like a uh, yeah, and this guy is rocking it. So okay, so and then we have these kids in the middle. You see, you see the second kid from like the left. Like, he's looking back. He's nervous. They look at each other. It's not like they're happy. They're playing around. No, they're kind of nervous. It's probably they, they probably look foreboding, or something's gonna happen. Like maybe it's like a child anxiety, but at the end of the day, they're, they're not happy. So it's gonna be a POV. Um, okay, so so now that we have all the details, so we we got this, we got this, we got all the details. So what is going on? So once again. Context: If you know what um, the Dev Shermay is, it's the it's a kidnapping and converting Christian boys. Some some parents giving them will, willingly um, to Islamic warriors starting with the 16th century. And audience, audience, once again, subjective. I mean, like you know, actually for me at least, um, whenever I, like image documents are hard to like decipher in terms of audience. I, I don't know who do, who, who are you drawing this for. So I would I just went with like oh viewers document, but probably historians or radical Muslims in the Ottoman Empire. And we'll go over that later. Why? But usually like radical radical people basically they want change and usually want to defy like old tradition. So technically this would be an old tradition because the Ottoman Empire will last until like the 1900. So 400 years from now. So maybe they want to abolish that policy because it's too extreme or maybe not. So maybe that's a possible audience um, candidate there. So um, purpose is probably um, the most like common like template to, to show, to express, to illustrate blank. So in this case, we want to show the public's and children's attitudes towards the deaf streaming system. So the publics are just amazed or like in awe or in, like they don't have anything to do. And the children are like nervous, they're like helpless, you know, you, wanna, you get those emotions from that. And the POV probably would be a, either a, it would be a, probably a Muslim onlooker, probably maybe a Christian, but more more, prob, more more on the Muslim side because remember it's a community of it's Muslims. So, and he's a commentator, and he might be an anti Debshirme system or for broding telling because if he was with the people doing the conversions and all, he would be portrayed as happy. But here, you can see that the kids are anxious; they're they they don't know what to do. So, he he wants to show he wants to show that. So maybe he asked maybe he's against the system. All right, so we're almost done with like a mini break. So do you guys have any questions? Don't worry, we only have like one example question after this. So and it's, it's it's your turn. It's your guys' turn. So. Do you have any questions about AP World or anything outside of that? We're all like open to answering any questions. Mm hmm No. All right. Let's go to the practice question. It's your guys' time to like. It's your time. It's your time to shine. So this is like a mini short answer question. So um, let's see. I'll read. The, um. So you, you can see there's a sort. There's a there's a small annotation summary at the top. It's Hernan Cortes, Spanish conquistador, conqueror. Letters from Mexico, August 12, 1521. So I'll read it. Um, on leaving the camp, I commanded Gonzalo de Sandoval to sail the brigantines in so their ships in between the houses in the, in the other quarter in which the Indians were resisting. So you can see there's a struggle here. So that we should have them surrounded, but not to attack until the, he saw that we were engaged. In this way, they would have been surrounded and so hard pressed that they would have no place to move save over the bodies of their dead or along the rooftop. So it's pretty graphic. Like they don't have space to move, like they're cornered at like, that like they're, they're stepping over like the dead bodies and that's pretty brutal. So they no longer could find any arrow, but javelins or stones and have any weapons. And our allies fighting with us were armed with swords and bucklers. So it's like an outnumber. It's a lose lose situation for the Indians. And they slaughtered so many of them on land and in the water that more than 40,000 were killed or taken that day. Pretty sad. So the question here is that identify one aspect of the sourcing of the document and explain how it influences the document. So it's like a short answer format here. So like identify, you wanna give a, like an like a exam, um, when you wanna give the answer, explain, you wanna give an example, and then you wanna um, explain why um, your example supports the answer. But I, like a hint, 
Um, it's really technical. I always say this, but it really is. When you when you look at like the, what is what is an what is the sourcing of the document sourcing? So look at the root word. It's source. So you look at the document source, and what influences the document source? You know, POV or like um, you know influences. So like a Spanish like a Spanish conquistador would have a different POV than an Indian. And you want to explain how this difference in mindsets and perspective influence the document. So um, this is like itself um, something to think about on your own. So I'll give you like 10 seconds to just think about it for a moment. And then it will go, Ivana will go over the answers. All right, five. Four, three, two, one. So if you have an answer in your mind, nice, nice, good job, good try, um, good job, guys. So if I will take the stage. All right, so we can see that right in the source we have Spanish conquistador, that's his point of view. He's like um, Jed mentioned that obviously because he's a Spanish conquistador, he's going to have a very different outlook on the situation as opposed to maybe a um, Native American would or another party. And also the fact that it's letters from Mexico kind of helps us understand like where we are at geographically. This could add to historical context in the future. And we see that we should have we should have them surrounded. This is helping us understand the plan, what's going on right now. It's again adding to our historical context because now we're understanding. Okay, so it kind of hints that the Spanish are winning, so to speak. They're definitely. Um, if they're having them surrounded, they're clearly have they have the upper hand. So we learned that from there, which is super critical. And another thing that we kind of want to mention that, that uh, we talked about earlier was that how point of view can also lead to a little bit of bias. They do say that more than 40,000 were killed or taken that day. And they talk about how there's, they slaughtered so many of them. They could potentially be exaggerating to a slight extent. We don't know that because of the fact that um, history has been told by the winners, you know, that's one of the phrases my uh, history teacher has told us a lot, and that's very true. As you can see here, it's be the Spanish conquistador is the one who's explaining everything. So it is important to think about the fact that he may be omitting parts of it, the fact that, like, we don't really see the numbers that um, they lost. We don't see a lot of key elements that took place in the battle because it's written by a Spanish conquistador. So I definitely feel as though for hit historical context is definitely a very good one to do for sure as its intended audience to an extent because you can clearly see it's from mexico they're probably trying to go back to europe telling everybody how uh, it wound down what happened what new uh, areas uh going to be spain's now so it's a pretty good uh thing to do and that ties into purpose because it just to inform the probably the spanish people what's going on in mexico uh, what land will Mexico or what land from Mexico will be given to Spain, etc. And then point of view is again very clear cut, a really good one to do, especially if you're running low on time, because on the DBQ, especially, you generally will not have enough time to do the hit in to its full extent, every part of the acronym for every single document. So it's imperative to just find the ones that are the easiest to do and analyze, and then use those to get your points. I know personally, if I'm a little bit wary on any of the ones I'm doing, I might do uh, one to two. I don't know about you, Jed. Um, how many did you tend to do when you were doing each document? Would you do one? Yeah, I did, yeah, I did one to two. Yeah. Once I'm short time, I just do one. Right, exactly. Like If I'm pretty confident and I don't have too much time, definitely go with one. But if you have a little bit of time, two might be a little bit better just in case you're like, oh, I'm not sure this one will work because uh, my AP World teacher did tell us he – he was, I think, a table leader at one point. He let us know that uh, AP readers will read every part of it. They're like required to read the whole thing. So maybe you didn't get it the first time, but you got it the second part, you would get the point. So I think it's important that if you have that extra time and you're not sure to go take that extra step. All right, going back, do you guys have any final questions? But yeah, we really do hope that, um, really do hope that you guys are getting this and we um, hope this guy really helped you and 
Yes, extra hip analysis can count for another point of the rubric, like extra evidence or context. So it's okay. It's okay to go extra, but like don't don't go like like below like what's needed. Like it's okay to go like, over than like under, you know. And yeah. All right, last call for questions. Ooh, ooh. All right, thank you guys for thank joining so us. Here. Like, thank you so much, guys. Like, you guys are good sports, and once again, hope like all the examples help you got help you, and uh, you can apply it to your own classrooms. You, you know, your next time ride, your next test, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for tonight. All right, bye bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>